Thanks for tuning in for another Essential RC flight test and a really exciting one because I think this is going to show a great relatively cheap way to get into turbine jet flying. I'm certainly not the first person to have done this type of project. There's a really good Facebook group out there called Micro Jet Turbines, I think. I think it's called that or Micro Turbine Jets, maybe it's called that. And uh, there have been several people on that group that have done that. Ray Payton, a uh, fantastic guy, uh, posted lots of pictures of his conversion of this particular airframe that I'm going to convert to, to uh, turbine power. So what am I converting? Well, first of all, um, you will have seen recently on the Essential RC YouTube channel that Jason and Carl have been flying their Freewing 80mm EDF uh, Avanti Sport Jet uh, and really enjoying it, so I, uh, so I saw that uh, Ray Payton on this particular Facebook group had converted one of those, so I thought, wow, I'll just, I'll just go for that. So luckily, Motion RC, who sell free wing jets, um, sell a version without the power system. So without the ducted fan, without the motor, without the speed controller, which is fantastic for people like us who want to convert them to, to turbine power. And it's cheaper, uh, which is good. And the other thing that's fantastic is that these free wing jets come with everything installed. I don't want to spend time putting in the servos and hooking them all up and all. I just, if I can, I want to avoid it. And it already arrives with them all already uh, in, installed and all wired up. Uh, so that's good. The, the second thing is to choose the, the engine. And there are a small number of options out there, but I've gone with the Kintec K45 G3, so this pushes out 45 newtons of thrust, uh, 10 pounds of thrust, and I got this from Kintec Luxembourg, who were very, very helpful and sent this out to me very promptly, so thanks to them. The next thing is how to convert this uh, to turbine power, and obviously there are things you have to think about, but this company in Sweden called Hab Electronics just take that whole headache away because there are three main considerations. The first one is that we're not going to have a big battery in here. We're going to have, we need, uh, we need to carry fuel. So as part of their conversion kit, they have a fuel tank. The fuel tank is 75 millimeters across 90 millimeters deep, which means uh, we are going to have to cut out some foam. The tank needs to sit on the sit on the wing joiner um, so some of this foam is going to have to be carved out but I can do that quite easily, I'm quite used to doing that type of thing and obviously with that with that tank you get all the plumbing that you need, there's a felt clunk as well I'm hoping by using that felt clunk I won't have to use a bubble trap which is quite which is what people normally use in turbine jets but I've heard that particularly Ray Payton's post that he gets away with not not using a UAT, not using a bubble trap if you use a felt clunk. So I'm going to try that, see if that works. Uh, the second thing is the mount. The engine is, na is, uh, is not as wide as the EDF unit, so they also give you these laser cut um, pieces. So you can bolt those onto the existing mount and bolt the engine onto that in the back here on those rails, ply rails there. The next thing is that obviously there are going to be hot exhaust gases going up the back of the fuselage and we don't want to melt the uh, whole rear section of the fuselage do we? So uh, we even in obviously in uh, composite moulded airframes they have a thrust pipe and that's what we have here, a single walled and basically we'll have the engine mounted and all the hot gases will go down that pipe and protect the, uh, the fuselage. And we also have uh, a little mount as well to go in the, on the back of the fuselage so that it holds the pipe in place so it doesn't touch, touch the foam airframe. So that's it. Shouldn't take too long to put together. Uh, carving out the foam and also need to line the inside of the rear section of the fuselage with aluminium tape. That's uh, something that people do when they convert these airframes to turbine power, so that will take a little bit of time. But in terms of putting a jet together, a turbine jet together, 
it should not take too too long because uh, you see people buy composite airframes with the bigger engines and it does take quite a bit of time to, to put those together. This is, I think, a relatively quick, a relatively cheap, and I do say relatively, it is expensive, I know, getting into turbine model flying, but there's no substitute for the sound, the smell of a proper jet engine running. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing this with this airframe and getting it in the air and getting that proper turbine jet experience. Okay, so good progress. The, the first thing to do was to ensure that I could fit the, the tank in. So I had to remove a huge amount of foam down the inside of the uh, Avanti. You can, you can see, that, see that there. Those structures that were in there were now all gone. And I used a really nice permagrit coarse curved file to remove even more foam from the insides here and here. So that the this this tank, which did I say was 75 mil diameter, will now will now fit in. I won't push it all the way back, but it basically has to go to be on the CG to be on the spar. It has to go back to pushing against the wood structures at the at the back top there. So that's that. The next thing I had to do was to put some. There's going to be quite a bit of heat. So to heat protect, and uh, what people usually do is use aluminium, aluminium tape. So the sticky back plumber's tape that they use, and you get it on a roll. And I recommend that if you're going to do this, you get, is that two inch width? Get the wide stuff. If you've got, you got the narrow stuff, it would take forever. So get the wide stuff. And then um, I put that all the way that's where the turbine is going to sit so it goes there and all the way up the up the back as well you can you can see there so that took a little while plus um, applying it to the other parts as well so the horizontal stabilizer fits onto the back of the fuselage there and the hatch for the fan or where the fan would have gone and the where the turbine will go that is heat protected as well so the next step is to use these provided carbon parts to mount the turbine. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so some really good progress. I've got the pipe in place, held in place by this bracket provided by Hab Electronics. Turn the fuselage over and you can see that I've got the engine in place and that's held in place placed by those two brackets which extend out and you have to drill two three mil holes on either side of the bell mouth of the pipe for the bracket to hold that in place so that it's not touching any part of the fuselage. Really simple install of this engine relative to others because only one electronic input and one fuel input. And turning over again then you can see I've got the tank in place which has got three pipes into it. The one pipe for filling, which is this pipe here, connected to a brass pipe which goes through the bung into the tank, straight pipe. Then you've got a vent, because when the fuel is being pulled out by the fuel pump out of this tank, we need to, it needs to draw air in to replace that. So that's our vent that goes basically through a hole in the bottom of the fuselage. And then the, the main pickup for the fuel out of the tank. So that goes into another brass pipe into the tank, into a bit of Tigon tubing in here, and then has a clunk. Now the clunk that comes with the kit is this which is nice, but I've replaced it with a version that Ray Payton used successfully, and that's this Walbro winged version that will soak up even more uh, fuel. So it's important because when the clunk is out of fuel, if you're doing aerobatics and you're inverted, the clunk might be out of the fuel, then it will, the fuel pump will draw from the felt um, because it will be soaked into that. So you should get constant supply to the engine. Other components that are in here, 
So that's the fuel pump that draws fuel out of the tank. Going around here into the filter which will prevent any gunk getting into the into the engine and then we've got a tap and we use a, a tap here we close that when we're filling so that no fuel gets pushed into the engine when we're when we're filling through this because that may result when we start up could cause a hot start and lots of flames and we definitely don't want that to happen so when we're ready to start flying and we start going to start up then we open up that tap into that position like that then we've got the ECU that controls the engine startup and it's running this is my receiver and this is the mixer board provided by Freewing with the model that's already connected to all of the all of the control surfaces and the landing gear so that you have a reduced number of channels into your receiver. The, because we don't have a speed controller then we uh, need to provide power into the receiver in a different way. So I'm going to use a two cell LiPo and I've got a Beck here that the two cell LiPo will plug into to power that receiver and all the connected servos and then this connection is for a three cell life battery into the ECU to run that ECU and the starter that will start up the uh, the turbine so I think that's about it so next step will be to actually test run the engine Okay, so ready to test the engine for the first time. So I've um, fueled up. I've uh, plugged in my GSU into the ECU and have used it use the uh, pump test to prime the fuel to pull the fuel from the tank through to the uh, engine. Watching it go round the fuel line. That's the first thing to do and have also done RC the transmitter learn on via the GCU as well so that the ECU now knows what um, what the low trim high trim and the minimum and maximum of the throttle is it needs to know that because you use different radios Futaba Spectrum JR they they all have different values that need to be recorded in the ECU so uh, also have my fire extinguisher on hand absolutely necessary when you're firing up a turbine for the first time and any other time come to that should anything go wrong so uh, we're all set let's let's do it so we go all the way up to idle on the idle and throttle up And that should start the start sequence.
that was good and it's now cooling down. Foam feels cool to the touch, so I think we're good. So in the next video, we'll go flying.